Well, since I review Tim Burton films, and don't worry, I'll review his future ones, don't worry about that, and decided to do a few movie battles, like the verses and comparisons, and I've still got a few in mind, um, I thought, why not this year I might do it on famous Broadway shows? Now, first of all, I can only review ones that I've seen, as I haven't seen every show, but to be fair, I've seen a few, um, whether it's stage or film adaption, so I thought maybe... First off, I should talk about my personal favourite, Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Wait. 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 Alex, what are you doing? What do you mean? You've already done a review on Sweeney Todd. On your Tim Burton reviews? Yeah. I did the behind the scenes trivia. Yeah. And you made me try to eat one of your Mrs Lovett's meat pies. Here we go, my homemade meat pie. Mmm, what's in it? Oh, secret ingredient, you know, all to do with herbs. Ah. Ah. Really, what is in it? Oh, uh, nothing for you to be worrying about. Yeah, I know. But I'm not just going to talk about the movie, I'm going to talk about the stage production and the history and everything. I guess so. It is your videos after all. As long as you don't make me eat one of your meat pies, I'm not falling for that again. Oh no, don't worry, you don't have to. No, 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 I, no I've made another one and, and it's not from Mrs Lovett. Totally human free. Well, okay. No, no, I'm serious. It's from her rival, Mrs. Mooney. T there's no human whatsoever. Okay, so what's in it? Yeah. All to do with herbs. Okay, so Sweeney Todd has had a history dating back to the 19th century, as the famous barber who slits the throat of his victims, sends them down and turns them into human meat pies. Still not falling for it! While some believe that both the demon barber and his partner in crime, Mrs. Nellie Lovett, really existed, others say the oldest version of the story was found in a Penny Dreadful series. No, not that Penny Dreadful, but they do reference it a couple of times. Called The String of Pearls in 1846. Only a year later it was adapted for the stage entitled The Demon Barber of Fleet Street and many plays that would follow and even films, including George King's black and white version in 1936. However, the story really began to take shape when Christopher Bond's stage production was introduced in 1973 as it expanded into the tale of revenge we are familiar with. The story of a man named Benjamin Bar Parker returning to his home after escaping from false imprisonment, only to find that his wife and daughter are no longer there. He is informed by the pie shop owner, Mrs. Lovett, that a judge was the reason for his arrest and that he took advantage of his wife, resulting in poisoning herself, and has now adopted his daughter, Joanna. Obsessed with revenge, Parker renames himself Sweeney Todd and becomes the demon barber of Fleet Street, hoping that one of his victims will be the judge. It was this production that inspired composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim and turned it into a Broadway musical in 1979 and won the Tony for Best Musical and more, including Best Original Score, Best Book, Best Leading Actress Angela Lansbury, Lighting, Costume, Scenic. Basically, it did really well. So influential, a certain Cal Arts student saw it several times in London, and as he became famous film director Tim Burton, and if you don't know who he is, then clearly you are new to my channel, made a movie adaptation in 2007 starring Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter, receiving critical praise, an Oscar for art direction, and a Golden Globe for best motion picture, musical, or comedy. And if you want to see the review for this movie, click that link below. Bottom line, Sweeney Todd has definitely become a celebrated character in literature, f stage, and film. And so, what is it about this demon barber that just interests us so much? What makes us excited about a story involving murder and cannibalism? I guess it helps that Penny Dreadfuls were very popular in Victorian times, 
Hell, the play of Sweeney Todd was shown before the conclusion was even published. Clearly, Victorians had such a thirst for horror and a sense of dread. It could be because the 19th century was the perfect environment for such stories to emerge. The pollution and the danger of the new machinery creating a dark and dangerous environment for the lower class, but also for the upper class. Successful factory owners now living in a bigger but gloomy hat homes with hallways lit by oil lamps and the sound of creaking floorboards from the servant headquarters. Shit, no wonder ghost stories were so popular in Victoria times. They could identify it. Hell, even Charles Dickens put ghosts in a Christmas story. But where does Sweeney Todd come in? Well, I can't speak for the readers at the time, but my guess is because the horror comes the mundane factor of a barber and a pie maker, and yet they're not what all the, what they seem to be. But clearly Bond knew that the two main leads needed a motivation, and so, so introduced the themes of revenge and obsession. In fact, it's not just Sweeney's obsession of revenge. It's Mrs. Lovett's obsession with Mr. Todd, the judge's obsession with Joanna, as well as Antony's obsession with freeing her, and even Pirelli's obsession with being the best barber, hence what makes him go and confront Sweeney. His idea of obsession from most of the characters made sometimes see that music was a way to enhance the drama and a different way of communicating to audiences. This is also what made Burton believe this musical would work for a movie, as the songs were used to involve the audience into the characters' internal thoughts. The songs that were used in the movie were songs that needed to be used to move the story along, as well as understanding the characters. For example, My Friends is the moment when Sweeney holds his razor for the first time in 15 years. Pretty much the only thing he has left. And this motivates him into the plot of revenging the judge. From the stage musical, it depends on the actor and the lighting to signify this moment, but with film, it's down to the performance, editing, and pretty much the cinematography. The scene was edited as though it was like a waltz, as well as the music communicating that this is such an important moment in the story. This is a great contrast to Worst Pies in London, as it's much faster, and so more action was done from Mrs. Lovett's <coughs> skills of making pies. And the fast edits communicate this through film language. However, when changing the stage production to screen, not all songs needed to be included, such as the case of The Ballad of Sweeney Todd, played at the beginning of the show and is sung throughout. On stage, this can have an effect as the actors are talking directly to the audience as sort of a Greek chorus. But as film is not live, it creates a boundary for the audience. So Burton had the song as an instrumental score in the opening credits and visually shows the process of the blood from the chair to the oven to the sewers and finally to the Thames. Without any dialogue, this gives a film audience the sense of atmosphere and the type of film that they are about to see. But the same music is heard throughout the film, just without the lyrics. But the same feeling is felt that it did on stage. Essentially, to be able to make a great film adaption of a musical, you need a director that knows the language of film and knows what it means to make a film. Which Tim Burton does. He knows that, well, it's a movie, and the audience feels as though they are watching a movie and not a stage production. Now, sometimes this does depend on the musical and the type of story that it is, as musicals can have some problems already, and when trying to fix them for film, it can result in more problems. I'll get to those later. But Sweeney Todd doesn't have a lot of problems, from a play standpoint. There have been plenty of revivals over the years with many visual methods, but from the productions that I have seen, there's a lot of minimalism as far as the set is concerned. Most of the time it's a backdrop or a brick wall or a silhouette of London. The main piece is the pie shop and the barber shop above, but it only shows the chair, the trunk, counter, etc. So again, not too much detail. The most detail is probably from the costume design. I guess the main element that directors focus on are the characters, which makes sense as the songs ties into the characters' internal emotions, such as My Friends, Green French and Linnet Bird, Pretty Women, By the Sea, Not While I'm Around. Yeah, a lot of the songs actually, but 
Is it just the characters that keeps us coming back? Is it the story? The visuals? The songs? Well, I thought back to what I personally loved about it. This was a film that I was really hyped to see, considering I wasn't old enough to see it and I didn't even know who Tim Burton was. I guess to me, its success is because it has a bit of everything in it. Or at least it managed to combine two polar opposites and yet it created a production that works. It started out as a horror story and now a musical? But it hasn't lost any of its horror elements. It has the adult themes, it has blood and a dark atmosphere, but it also has its tragedy, its comedy, its romance, its music. The fact that there is something for everyone is part of, it, of its success, and it introduces people to new things. For those who love musicals may come out wanting to see more horror, and vice versa. It is a story that can be told in different ways, and so anyone can come across it and enjoy it. From books, plays, music, and film, and for me, it still holds up as my favourite musical for all these reasons. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and my Broadway Baby musical reviews has only just begun. Still not falling for it. Oh, come on, you said you liked cats! The rational to